tremendous, lethal, volatile, earth-shattering sports talk will commence in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yes, and you are listening to The Doug Stewart Show. Thanks for joining you, folk. I really do appreciate it. Yes, yes, yes. And it is a Word on the Street Wednesday. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun for the next two hours like we do every single day. Yes, yes, yes. A uh, couple little interesting stories to get into in the world of sports. Uh, we got a, a fun little daily, Dougie Daily topic thingy we're going to do today. So uh, make sure you tell people about the show. Continue to tell people. I think we're up at like 25. Yes, tell 25 people about the livest, the most interactive, the most fun sports talk show in America. Yes, yes. Uh, you can give us a call at 404-382-0338. 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show dot com. Uh-huh. And uh, this segment is brought to you by Univon. Univon gives you uh, great long distance, not like you at your mama's house. And so check out Univon on my website, thedougstewartshow.com, and, uh, you know, see what they're offering, man. They're doing some big things, and we are doing big things on this show, and the numbers continue to grow. And as of last night, we crossed the 20,000 listen mark. Yeah! <laughs> It was all a dream. <laughs> In the great words of Biggie Smalls, it was all a dream. Yes, and the show is going fantastic. Uh, the next big landmark that we're going to celebrate is 25,000 listens, and that should happen. I'm projecting uh, no later than Saturday. Uh, we got a lot of people that listen to the show live, but we have a ton of people that download the podcast. I guess they're working. <laughs> they bossed on their back. So, uh... We're projecting by this weekend we'll hit that 25,000 listen mark. And so thank you very much. I appreciate it all. All right. Uh, so a couple of stories in the world of sports. Obviously last night, shouts out to the San Francisco Giants as they jump out to one nothing in their uh, in their World Series matchup against the, against the Kansas City Royals. Uh, Hunter Pence goes yard very early in the game. Madison Bumgarner just balls out of control. So shouts out to the San Francisco Giants and Kansas City. I don't want to say back to life, back to reality, because it's just one game and it's a seven-game series. But uh, they've been undefeated in the postseason, and last night, not so much. James Seals got uh, nicked up real early. Seems like he couldn't find his spots. Uh, Barry Larkin and those guys on the post-game uh, set talked about it, the fact that he wasn't really getting the, uh, the pitches that he wanted and, and the strikes calls that he wanted. And so it was a tough night for James Shield last night. So we'll see what happens in game two of that series. So shouts out to the San Francisco Giants. The World Series is underway. I actually watched the entire game last night. Kind of doing some work at the same time, but also, uh, you know, paid uh, attention intently to the game last night, the World Series. So I, I definitely do that this time of the year. Uh, you are listening to the Doug Stewart Show. So the World Series is, under, uh, is underway right now. And obviously college football is underway big time. A lot of stories. We'll talk about Todd Gurley in today's show and what's going on with him. Some new news coming out of Athens, Georgia. The Atlanta Falcons, they got a road trip of epic proportions <laughs> this weekend. And I think something about this game the Falcons have this weekend in London people may not even uh, realize or have been paying attention to. So we'll talk briefly about the Falcons. Uh, we'll talk briefly about the Georgia Bulldogs, as I said. We'll talk about Georgia Tech. You know, Georgia sports, we'll get into all of that. And that's what we do around here. We talk Georgia sports every single day. I mean, that's number one. That's numero uno. But at the same time, we national. We worldwide, so we can talk about anything. And whatever you want to talk about, if you're in Cali, if you're in South Dakota, uh, what's South Dakota's team name? I think they're the Bisons. <laughs> yes, I think the South Dakota Bisons, that's the college uh, uh, mascot. If you want to talk about Bison football, you can call up here and you can tell us about bison football. We may not be able to tell you or talk to you about it, but damn it, it's your show. It's the people's show. All right, so wherever you are, Hawaii, I mean, Nebraska, we can talk Cornhusker football. It doesn't matter. You can do that on this show. The number is 404-382-0338. Kobe Bryant's in the news. Ray Rice is in the news. 
Uh, Michael Sam is in the news. So we'll get to all of those topics. If you want to talk about any of those topics uh, without me even getting into it a little bit, you can give us a call. You know, hit us up, 404-382-0338. And you can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. Uh, both of those, I'm at the Doug Stewart Show. So, yeah, yeah, that's what we're doing today, having a lot of fun. Speaking of fun, and you are listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Last night, so a couple of people told me about uh, this TV show, Gotham, or is it Gotham City? And basically what this show is, is it's kind of like – uh, Smallville, and if you remember Smallville, basically Smallville followed a young Clark Kent throughout his childhood and, and coming up, and it was it was prequel to Superman. And so that's what this Gotham City show is, it's prequel to Batman, all right? And so, uh, I mean, you know the story about Batman, so I'm not giving anything away, but basically it follows him around, and it basically starts from uh, the time when Bruce Wayne, the young Bruce Wayne, is a kid, and his parents are killed, like, right in front of him, all right? So uh, it, it goes over that, and then you see a young Alfred, a younger Alfred, because I think Alfred in the show has always been about 90 years old. So it's a young Alfred that actually takes, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to say possession, but he becomes basically his guardian uh, at that point when his parents are killed, okay? And then also, it, it kind of like the main character in the show is a young Commissioner Gordon. And I put that together because the main investigator on the case is a guy, and his last name is Gordon. So I'm projecting this guy is going to be Commissioner Gordon uh, when Batman uh, takes fruition. Okay, so it's a young Commissioner Gordon. And it's also a young, and you get introduced to a character who later becomes the Penguin. All right? And so it's, it's very interesting, it's fascinating, and it started me thinking. <laughs> and that's my, that's my statement every single day when we talk about these Dougie Daily questions. It started me thinking about the, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the phenomenon. Yes, it starts me thinking about the phenomenon of uh, comic books and Marvel and these superheroes. Okay, and so we're dudes, I mean... You know, 80% of our listeners are dudes, and, you know, we, we like action, and so most of us probably grew up reading comic books and, and uh, you know, having a favorite superhero and a favorite superhero group or whatever. So I thought that'd be an interesting Dougie Daily topic today. Now, if you don't know me, I am a huge, okay, superhero comic book guy, okay? I probably had, and I'm not exaggerating growing up, I probably had 500, 600 comic books. Now, that's when comic books were 25 cents. I don't know when was the last time I bought a comic book. But, yeah, comic books were real cheap. And it was kind of like, you know, what we did as kids. We played marbles. We read comic books. We collected baseball cards, uh, sports cards. So that's what we did as kids growing up in the 70s and early 80s. So, uh, that's the question. The Dougie Daily question is, who's your favorite superhero? Okay? And you can you can give me some background on it. Why is this guy your favorite superhero? Or give me your favorite superhero group. Or do you like a superhero that's kind of like an abstract superhero? And for me, uh, my main superhero, uh, the guy that I, uh, my favorite superhero is probably the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> And I know he is, he doesn't have a lot of flashy stuff. He's just a big ass green monster and he'll smash, Hulk smash, Hulk smash. And he used to wear these funky ass purple pants back in the day, but the Hulk was the epitome of strength to me, I guess. And kind of looking at it and analyzing and dissecting why I love the incredible Hulk so much back in the day because the Hulk was the simplest form of a superhero, stronger than everybody else. Bigger, stronger, faster than everybody else. He didn't, you know, uh, you know, uh, do any scientific experiment. Well, actually, he did do some scientific experiments. The gamma rays and the lead to the Incredible Hulk. But, you know, no super weapons, this, that, and the other. It's, it's, it's just all about strength and mass. And that's why I like the Incredible Hulk. Here's a name, though, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show, of a superhero that... You probably forgot about, and I haven't seen any conversation of, of making a movie about him. I haven't seen that out there in the blogosphere. But you remember the Iron Fist? 
Yes! Do you remember the Iron Fist? Iron Fist was basically the Kung Fu dude. He was the Kung Fu superhero, and he had this funky, cool green and yellow suit, and he wore a mask with a bandana, and he was kind of like, you know, cool, because back then, you know, we, we watched Kung Fu Theater on Sunday and Bruce Lee, and so that type of thing was going on. And so we were big into Kung Fu. And so what did Marvel do? They came up with a Kung Fu dude. <laughs> yes. So the Iron Fist. And, and I think that would translate great today. And all you got to do is get one of them Jackie Chan dudes, uh, Jet Li dudes, and you got you a, uh, you got your Iron Fist movie. Okay? So that's what we're talking about today, man. We're having a little fun with that. Who's your favorite superhero and why? Uh, these superhero movies, man, have just dominated movies over the last decade, really. And you talk about X-Men and uh, uh, the Avengers and all these groups and uh, these particular movies. Even the Fantastic Four had a movie. They're going to do a reboot of that. So, yeah, yeah, Gotham City uh, got me thinking about superheroes and, and yesteryear. And I said it yesterday. We, we talk about yesteryear on this show a lot. We reminisce. <laughs> we like Pete Rock and see us move on the Doug Stewart Show. We reminisce over you. We reminisce over things in the past. And so let's have a little fun with that. Who's your favorite superhero? Who's your favorite, favorite superhero group? My favorite superhero group is the Avengers. It was before they even started making the movies. And that's the bulk of the comic books that I had growing up were Avenger comic books. So I get real excited when I hear that they're adding a different character because there's like a thousand different Avengers. <laughs> it is. So they can just add a character here and add a character there and do movies forever. Uh, allegedly, in the next movie, there's going to be a, a, a Vision sighting. There's going to be a Scarlet Witch sighting. So, yes, I am hyped. I am stoked for the next Avengers movie. All right, up next on the Doug Stewart Show, Todd Gurley. There's some new information about the running back from the University of Georgia. We'll talk about that. I'll give you a little something about the Falcons game this weekend that you may not have known if you weren't paying attention. We'll talk a little Georgia Tech. We'll touch upon all of that little Georgia football stuff, all right? And anything you want to talk about, all right? It's Sports Talk with Hot Sauce. Texas Pete Hot Sauce. It's the Doug Stewart Show. So you think you're a fantasy whiz, huh? Well, prove it and make some nice scratch at the same time. Scratch is money. What do you know about FanDuel? FanDuel packs the thrill of a whole season in one week. Play in one-week fantasy football leagues for free money with immediate cash payouts. The money is real with no season-long commitment. That's huge because when your team starts to suck, you don't want to play no more. It's no more fun. Trade everybody. I've been there. You play when and how much you want. Deposit now and FanDuel will match it up to $200. Use the promo code COOLER, that's C-O-O-L-E-R, and take advantage of free loot to get your game on. FanDuel, where every week is a new season. The Doug Stewart Show is off and running, but just like every company, we need sponsors. Would yours like to work with one of the livest, most dynamic, and recognized sports talk dudes in America? By the way, I'm talking about myself. Getting in on the ground floor? Well, call us at 770-847-0536 or email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show .com and let's do business. From the smallest company in Atlanta to the biggest brands nationally and worldwide, shawty, people know me and the Stews brand in these streets. Holla at your boy. Once again, the number is 770-847-0536 or email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show dot com. What is 911 Tax Relief? It's a tax relief company that can help you reduce or remove your IRS or state tax debt. They'll help stop bank levies and wage garnishments by implementing offers in compromise or penalty abatements. 911 Tax Relief is a tax relief company, but they're different from the others. Their experts are licensed and role tax agents, and they also have more than 12 years' experience helping people solve their tax problems. They're a tax relief company that understands how the IRS works, and they'll also put that knowledge to work for you so they can get you the best possible settlements or solutions to your tax problems. Highly rated by the Better Business Bureau, and they've also helped thousands of people, I mean thousands, solve their tax problems. So don't play around. Click on their link on my website, thedougstewartshow.com, and let 911 Tax Relief help you and your situation with our uncle. 
you know, Uncle Sam. Thank you for joining me on the Doug Stewart Show. Uh, we really appreciate it. A lot going on today. This is a Word on the Street Wednesday. And uh, this segment is brought to you by 911 Tax Relief. Get Uncle Sam off your back. Check out my folks at 911 Tax Relief on the DougStewartShow.com. All right, so if you're just joining us, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're just joining us, uh, have a little fun today talking about superheroes. And I, I talked about how, uh, and how you like this music. <laughs> This is the best superhero music my producers could come up with. Yes. But maybe this sounds like an NFL films <laughs> uh, soundtrack. One of the two. It's supposed to be Super Bowl or, or superhero music, but not so much. All right, this is the Doug Stewart Show. And so we're talking about superheroes. I mentioned how uh, last night I watched a DVR. And I don't even know what night it comes on. It comes on Fox. It's called Gotham or Gotham City. And it's talking about uh, young Batman and following him throughout his life. And I thought the first episode was pretty good and I uh, I didn't mention that just now that uh, that I think the show is pretty good it has potential uh, Jada Pinkett's in it oh man her little fine <laughs> that Jada Pinkett is something fine and she uh she has some pretty strong acting scenes now, I can't figure out if Jada Pinkett in this TV show is I don't know for some reason I think she's gonna ultimately be Catwoman or something like that I haven't figured that out but Jada Pinkett's in this show, and it's pretty good, and it follows a, a young Bruce Wayne. Um, and some characters already introduced are, are Commissioner Gordon. Uh, he's kind of like the main character in the show. And also uh, Alfred, and uh, also the Penguin is kind of introduced in the first episode of the show as well. So it's kind of cool. A guy that uh, read comic books growing up, it's kind of cool. Uh, kind of reminds you of Smallville, if you watch that, when they followed a young Clark Kent. So check it out. And it's on Fox, I believe, so it's... So today we're talking a little bit, and the daily topic is, uh, who's your favorite superhero? Why is this person your favorite superhero, your favorite group? Uh, also, if you've got an abstract superhero that you like, I mentioned in the first segment, uh, kind of one of my favorites growing up, and I used to collect the comic book, was uh, Iron Fist. And I just thought he was cool. Kung Fu, and back then, Kung Fu was big. Not so much now, but it was big back then. So, so we're having a little fun with that. So, and another guy that was kind of a favorite of mine, a side favorite superhero of mine was a Hawkeye. And Hawkeye has already been introduced in the Avengers. Hawkeye is a dude with a bow and arrow. I just thought his, his costume was funky fresh back in 1977. <laughs> so I thought it was cool. And I used to go to 4-H camp. And so at 4-H camp, they had archery. And, you know, I'm, I'm a Hawkeye. You know, I'm shooting a bow and arrow. And that's, that was kind of cool. So we're having a little fun with that. And we're also talking about these Georgia sports and what's going on nationally. And if you haven't heard, uh, Todd Gurley, he was suspended as a, the university investigated, the Georgia, the University of Georgia investigated whether he took money uh, uh, for signing his autograph, so illegal benefits. So now Todd Gurley and his representatives and the University of Georgia in, 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 in uh, cooperation with Todd Gurley are petitioning the NCAA for him to come back, okay, and, and play football for the uh, Georgia Bulldogs. So what this tells me uh, is that the university has done their due diligence, they've done their investigation, and initially I thought, probably like most people, that the fact that they suspended him, that there was smoke about this fire. But if he's petitioning to come back right now, uh, clearly – it's not to that degree, and maybe Georgia heard about these things, and they wanted to do their investigation, and maybe the entire time Todd Gurley was saying, no, I didn't do this, you know, kind of with the same things that Jameis Winston is saying. That's what it appears like to me, because if he's petitioning to come back, if he wants to come back and play football for the University of Georgia, he wants to be reinstated, uh, and Georgia's in agreement with him that he should be reinstated and that it's okay and that they found nothing, and you know they'd like for the NCAA to, to let them know if they've got anything. They feel confident that Todd Gurley uh, did nothing, or just like Jameis Winston, there's nothing you can prove. So that's some great news coming out of Athens uh, for Georgia fans because, and I said it the other day, that Nick Chubb is doing fantastic. And he may well be the second, third best back in the country based on what he's doing as a freshman. But you aren't a better team without Todd Gurley. You're just not a better team without Ty Gurley. 
your players and everybody on offense and defense and on special teams may have stepped their game up. Uh, you know, not a fan watching Todd Gurley do his thing every Saturday. Uh, but, yo, you're not a better team without Todd Gurley. And it's almost kind of like, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show, it's almost kind of like that conversation people were having uh, a couple of years ago when Ray Lewis retired from the Baltimore Ravens. And everybody was trying to make these these references and uh, uh, inferences that, that the, the Ravens were going to be a better team without Ray Lewis. That was, that's crazy. <laughs> that's hogwash. That's a lie. That's not true, as evident by last season. Um, they're, they're a good ball club because they just have a great culture there. But you aren't better without if you don't have the greatest linebacker in NFL history, uh, arguably. So same situation I feel with the University of Georgia. They get back Todd Gurley, and they're right there in the mix for a team that could you know, vault up and get into this top four and play in this playoff. So that's great news. And the fact that they've come out with this, I think that there's some substance to it. Uh, and I look to see Todd Gurley. And this week, Georgia has a bye week. They don't play again until the following weekend against Florida and the world's biggest cocktail party uh, down in Florida and Jacksonville. So that's, that's a huge thing. So this is kind of like the perfect time to put the story out there and to put the wheels in motion and getting Gurley back on the field where he's been practicing already for the last week. So, yeah, you make some type of determination if you're the NCAA or if you're the University of Georgia and you get this guy back into his regular schedule and get him back on the field and Georgia go down there, handle their business against Florida and go on and and possibly put themselves in position to make a run for a national title. And I don't think that's crazy talk. You know, everybody was all distraught after the loss to South Carolina, but Georgia's rebounded just tremendously. I mean, very decisive wins over Vanderbilt and uh, and over uh, not so much Vanderbilt, but Missouri and Arkansas. So, yeah, I mean, Georgia's right there. <laughs> they are right there. And uh, getting Gurley back is going to do nothing but enhance their chances. 404-382-0338 is the number to the show. You can also... Email us at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show dot com. Uh, also this weekend, Georgia Tech, they travel to Pitt to take on the Pitt Panthers. Georgia Tech really struggling right now. I've lost their two last ball games in a row. Uh, it's almost like seems like figure that pe- uh, people have figured out Justin Thomas uh, in this Georgia Tech offense. Uh, losing one game uh, at home against Duke, which is never good. But Duke is playing great football. So Georgia Tech travels to the new member one of the new members of the ACC pit, which is always strange to me. <laughs> Whenever a team moves in conference and you got Nebraska playing in the Big Ten and you got Pitt and Syracuse in the ACC, just strange as hell. So Georgia Tech's on the road this weekend taking on the Pitt Panthers as well as uh, uh, the Atlanta Falcons. And, and, and I, didn't, I, I didn't mention this over the last couple of days, and I don't know if a lot of people realize it, but I'm doing this weekend, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show, uh, this weekend, I'm doing the pregame show at Impact Church. And so looking at the schedule, you know, I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, this is that London game. But I realized a little bit further, not only is it that London game, but the game comes on at 930 in the morning. <laughs> yes. I agree with you, studio audience. Boo. The game comes on at 9.30 in the morning. All right, they're playing this game in London against the Detroit Lions. And so this is like a Stu's public service announcement. All right, a Dougie public service announcement. The game is at 9.30 Sunday between the Falcons and the Lions. And I know good and well 90% of you listening right now didn't realize that. I know you didn't. Or maybe you did. If if you're, you know, if you got ties in London or whatever, you know the whole time difference thingy or whatever maybe some of you did but I promise you <laughs> that 90% of you didn't know that the Falcons game comes on this weekend at 9 30 on Sunday morning so we're going to kind of get our little west coast groove type thing going on you know in the west coast they're three hours behind and so games that that we're used to coming on at 1 p.m. and all of the games they when they report the times and the schedule they give eastern time and that's kind of like that east coast bias <laughs> But it is what it is. And so on Cali, they're watching football at 10 in the morning. You know, and they get done early. You know, their games are done. So they got time still to get out. I know a lot of people in California, our producer Raj, uh, still lives out there when we were with Sporting News years and years ago. And he was like, man, it's the greatest thing ever. He was originally from Philly. 
But he was like, man, it's the greatest thing ever to live out on the West Coast and watch football because, you know, we're done early. You know, you on the East Coast, you guys are watching football until midnight, you know, with the Sunday night game. So, yeah, the game is at 930 this Sunday, Falcons and Lions. All right, up next on the Doug Stewart Show, <sighs> Kobe Bryant getting killed in the media. <laughs> yes, and, and it's something I dub as irresponsible journalism at its finest. And we talked about that yesterday. So we'll get into that story. We're asking you who your favorite superhero is of all time in honor of Gotham City, the TV show. You need to check it out. It's pretty damn good. I'm going to watch it again. I don't a lot of, watch a lot of network TV, but this is a pretty good show. Don't go away. It's the Doug Stewart Show. What is 9-11 Tax Relief? It's a tax relief company that can help you reduce or remove your IRS or state tax debt. They'll help stop bank levies and wage garnishments by implementing offers in compromise or penalty abatements. 9-11 Tax Relief is a tax relief company, but they're different from the others. Their experts are licensed enrolled tax agents, and they also have more than 12 years' experience helping people solve their tax problems. They're a tax relief company that understands how the IRS works, and they'll also put that knowledge to work for you so they can get you the best possible settlement or solution to your tax problems. Highly rated by the Better Business Bureau, and they've helped thousands of people solve their tax problems. So don't play around. Click on the link on my website and let 911 Tax Relief help you in your situation with our uncle, better known as Sam. So you think you're a fantasy whiz, huh? Well, prove it. And make some nice scratch at the same time. Scratch is money. What do you know about FanDuel? FanDuel packs the thrill of a whole season in one week. Play in one-week fantasy football leagues for free money with immediate cash payouts. The money is real with no season-long commitment. That's huge because when your team starts to suck, you don't want to play no more. It's no more fun. Trade everybody. I've been there. You play when and how much you want. Deposit now and FanDuel will match it up to $200. Use the promo code COOLER, that's C-O-O-L-E-R, and take advantage of free loot to get your game on. FanDuel, where every week is a new season. I'm always saying get with the times. Stop acting like you at your mama house. Calling that girl you met at summer camp two states away and your mama screaming out, I know you better not be talking long distance running up my bill with that little hussy girl. Well, get with the times with the long distance charges. Presenting Univon. Univon offers unlimited worldwide calling to 60 plus countries for $14.99 a month. No contract, no activation fee, and no cancellation fee. Users can call anytime using their mobile phone or home IP phone. So stop flushing money down the drain. Get more details by clicking Univon's link banner on the DougStewartShow.com or the link on the DougStewartShow.com app. Try out Univon and call your peoples like you not at your mama house. The Waffle House of Sports Talk Radio, the Doug Stewart Show. Scattered, smothered, diced, peppered, uh, cheesed. <laughs> I don't think cheese is one of the things they do at Waffle House. I got an email about that, and you are listening to the Doug Stewart Show. I got an email about that a while back when I played that little uh, that little drop just now about Waffle House, and someone that's from some part of the country, uh, and they didn't understand the culture of Waffle House, and so I had to explain to them that's how they they uh, they set up your your hash browns or or whatever it is. Yeah, your hash browns for the most part. You know, how do you want your hash browns? You can get them. Uh, smothered, I think that's with chili. Uh, you can get them covered, maybe that's with cheese, I don't know. You can get them peppered, that's the onions and peppers. Uh, dice is something else, and all of that stuff. So that's Waffle House down south jargon. And if you're not from the ATL, you, you may not understand, you may not get it, but there's a Waffle House on every exit. I promise you, there's not an exit in the state of Georgia. If there's not a Waffle House, or at least a, uh, a legitimate exit, <laughs> any legitimate exit is going to have a Waffle House in the state of Georgia, all right? And uh, 
So that's what that's all about, that scattered cover thing. All right, this is the Doug Stewart Show. The number is 404-382-0338. Once again, 404-382-0338. And uh, it's a Word on the Street Wednesday, and we're talking about having a little fun with superhero talk. You know, all right? I mentioned how I watched Gotham City, uh, the Bruce Wayne prequel, or the Batman prequel, and I thought it was pretty good. So got me thinking about the, the phenomenon of uh, uh, superheroes and and uh, these superhero films and movies that have been doing fantastic, pretty much have carried the industry. When you're talking about blockbusters over the summers, you've been talking about these superhero flicks. Am I wrong about that? You've been talking about a new movie coming out by X-Men, by Avengers, uh, The Hulk, Captain America, Iron Man. That's what you've been talking about. Those have been the big blockbusters uh, movies that have come out over the last decade or so. And so it's fantastic. And some of them have been uh, fantastic, and some of them have sucked. (laughs) Like like Catwoman, speaking of Batman and uh, Bruce Wayne, Catwoman with Holly Berry was awful from what I heard. It was so bad that I didn't didn't even go see it. And first of all, I didn't get the premise. Why would you go see a movie on Catwoman? And then they said the movie and the script sucked. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, Catwoman, how about Daredevil? Uh, What's the guy? the, The guy, he's in a new movie right now, Gone Baby. Uh, he played like Daredevil in that movie, and that sucked. Let me tell you a superhero movie that sucked, that, that had a lot of capability and possibility to be great, and he just killed it because he's one of the worst actors in the history of the world. Ghost Rider with Nicolas Cage absolutely sucked. And I think they've done like three of them, maybe two or three of them. But the first one just absolutely sucked. And now if you're a a comic book aficionado like myself, you know that Ghost Rider was that dude. I mean, that was like one of the top comics growing up. You know, the top comics back in the day were X-Men, uh, were the Avengers, uh, Fantastic Four, and Ghost Rider was somewhere not far behind. And Nicolas Cage with his non-acting ass just killed it. And Daredevil was Ben Affleck. Thank you, Scotty. Uh, Nicolas Cage just killed Ghost Rider. Maybe they need to do a reboot for that. Yeah, with a different dude acting. And if you don't know, and you never listened to the Stews, back in the day, uh, once again, I'm big into to entertainment, to movies and TV and, and comic books and all that type of stuff. I'm a big-ass kid. I got probably 5,000 cards uh, in, a, in a safe deposit box, uh, uh, trading cards, that at some point are going to probably put my kid in college, uh, my youngest daughter, when I let him get a little bit older. But uh, I'm a big movie guy as well. All right, so I see all of the new movies that come out, and I've said it, and I've put it out there, and you tell me if I'm lying. Maybe we'll do this on another show, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Nicolas Cage is the worst actor in the history of the world. (laughs) He is the worst actor in the history of the world. And I go all the way back to Nicolas Cage with a movie called Con Air. Go back and watch the first 15, 20 minutes of Con Air. And tell me if Nicolas Cage didn't put forth the worst exhibition of acting that you'd ever seen. And so I've heard he's done a little bit better over the years. He must got some people in Hollywood because he keeps getting jobs. Maybe he has been a little bit better, but I wouldn't know. Because I have never, ever spent another dime in watching another Nicolas Cage movie ever since Con Air came out. And Con Air was probably, I don't know, 94, 95. But I was done on Nicolas Cage. And sure enough, oh, I did watch a, a Nicolas Cage movie because I went to see Ghost Rider. All right? So I never went and supported that guy ever, ever again. He is a horrible actor. So we're talking about that. And we're also talking about Georgia sports. I'm going to briefly mention to you in a second some, a story about Kobe Bryant. I really need to give this Kobe Bryant story a little bit of uh, time because it's that crazy. It's that unbelievable to me. But right now, let's talk to my man, Derek, from Birmingham. Derek, thanks for calling the Doug Stewart Show. Derek, what you got? I ever, ever did. He's a horrible actor. So we're talking about... Hey, uh, Derek. about Okay, Derek, you got to turn down your radio, bro. When you call a radio show, you got to turn down your radio. You got to pay attention when you get brought up on the air. The number is 404-382-0338. All right, so uh, this, this writer, Henry Abbott, and I'm not going to even give you the details about this, uh, I'm going to give you basically in, 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 uh, in quick form, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. This writer from ESPN, ESPN.com, his name is Henry Abbott. He writes this story for ESPN the magazine 
basically you know, referring to quote-unquote sources, and I hit this yesterday, uh, quote-unquote sources around the Lakers organization that are telling him that Kobe Bryant shot, uh, that no free agent will come play for the Los Angeles Lakers, that he's ruining the organization from the inside, that none of his teammates like him, that, yes, he is one of the hardest workers in basketball, but he's just killing the organization. And basically all these uh, vague little things out there about Kobe and what's going on in the organization and why nobody likes him, this, that, and the other. And my problem with this story is not that this guy wrote this story. Yeah, I guess my problem is that this guy wrote the story because it's too vague. And not only is it too vague, but he's reporting and he made this big story and he's getting these headlines for information that we already knew. <laughs> we knew all of this stuff. This is nothing different than Kobe Bryant 15 years ago. That his teammates didn't like him. That he worked extra hard. That uh, he may be internally, uh, you know, a negative aspect for the organization. But we also know that he's won five rings. That he's probably a top five basketball player of all time, at least in the last 25 years. When you're talking about Michael Jordan and, and Magic Johnson, Kobe's not too far behind. So the problem I have with this story is, one, that you're using sources exclusively in such a negative story. And two, you're reporting on something that we already knew. And oh yeah, the issues with salary cap. The Lakers did that. The, the organization gave Kobe Bryant $30 million. Nobody put a head, uh, a, a gun to the head of Mitch Kupchak and, uh, and Buss. Uh, uh, the owner and the, and the team to give Kobe Bryant $30 million a year. Nobody did that. And I did a show on YouTube a while back when that deal went down, uh, when some negative things happened, when, when Dwight Howard left Lakers and uh, they couldn't attract free agents. I did a show on that. And I talked about this is, you guys did this. The Lakers did this. They gave Kobe $30 million and can't get, you know, pay for other free agents. They gave Steve Nash, who hadn't really contributed at all, you know, a, a, a huge contract, $10 million a year, I believe it is, to come play for the Lakers, and he shot. The Lakers did this to themselves. And all this other stuff this guy, Henry Abbott, writes about, and this isn't even a Laker fan talking, I swear to you, it's not. If you disagree with me, tell me. If you understand where this guy's coming from with these sources, and this is a, a, a legitimate story, you know, hit me on, on the speaker chat or, or email me or, or on Twitter or whatever. But this isn't a story. All the stuff, this titillating stuff in this story is not a story because we knew all of this about Kobe. And Kobe responded to it. It's like, man, it is what it is. I use, you know, I'm like a, a, a duck with water slide off his back. It's no big deal. I've, I've been, you know, through this type of stuff my entire career. It's a story today. It won't be a story when I do something great. And that's pretty much accurate. That's the truth. The story is just, and this is the journalism I'm talking about. And we're going to play the Source Brothers bit tomorrow. <laughs> and you'll get a good kick out of that. But yeah, this isn't even a story. And I would put this under the category of just bad journalism. It just is. And I always say I'm not a journalist. Uh, you know, I'm more so a voice of the people that has a microphone in front of his face, and I give you a lot of opinions that you normally don't hear on mainstream uh, TV and radio, and that's truth. That's truth. But I can go ahead and quantify this as bad journalism because it's just salacious, and it's, you know, something this salacious, you got to give some type of evidence to some sources. A lot of this stuff sounds like stuff in this story that he had in a conversation with his boys at the barbershop. <laughs> yes! It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. This is the Doug Stewart Show. Let's go ahead and grab this call. Let's talk to Triple Digit. Triple Digit from D.C. Thanks for calling the Doug Stewart Show. What you got? What up, Triple Digit? Uh, yeah. We still got the same issue with the radio. Uh, maybe that's on our end now. That That's happened two times in a row. So we'll take care of that in the, uh, in the back room, in the studio. Uh, as far as the echo... Uh, with the callers, the number is 404-382-0338. Derek uh, from Birmingham, I believe it was, and Triple Digit. Uh, give us a call back. We'll make sure and, and address the situation. And if you did have your radio on Triple Digit, you know better than that. <laughs> You're a long-time caller. All right, I think we got him back on the line now. 
Let's go ahead and try triple digit one more time. Triple digit, thanks for calling the Doug Stewart Show. What you got? Yeah, uh, do you have your radio down? I'm sorry, what? Do you have your radio turned down? I'm not, I don't have any radio on. Okay, um, okay, we getting the echo in the background from the radio show. Maybe it's on our end. Uh, we'll take care of that. Uh, once I, once we figure it out, I'll put an announcement out there that uh, we can take callers again. The number is 404-382-0338. Uh, you can also email us at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. Got some great little messages I want to read here on chat uh, from Polo Negro and from Scotty and from Griff. What are your thoughts on that story by Henry Abbott on ESPN the magazine and ESPN the magazine? I've read the story and it's it's just salacious. It's just, you know, a bunch of rumor and innuendo. And I talked to a dude the other day, and my cousin said this. I think it's hogwash. I think it's garbage, as a matter of fact. And I think that's what Kobe called it. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on that? When we get back from the break, we'll touch upon some of these issues going on in Georgia sports, in particular football. And, uh, and uh, yeah. And also what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about Ray Rice and Michael Sam. Yes. <laughs> a little Michael Sam conversation on the Doug Stewart Show. And I haven't talked about dude at all. And, you know, I'll get into it when I get back. When we get back from the break, we'll talk Michael Sam. We'll talk Ray Rice. We'll talk more Kobe if you want to. As well as, uh, you know, what's going on with these uh, this, this football, this NFL, and this college football. All right, don't go away. It's the Doug Stewart Show. The Doug Stewart Show is off and running. But just like every company, we need sponsors. Would you like to work with one of the livest, most dynamic, and recognized sports talk show personalities in America? By the way, that's me. Getting in on the ground floor? Well, call us at 770-847-0536 or email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com and let's do business. From the smallest company in Atlanta to the biggest brands nationally and worldwide, Shouty. People know me and the Stews brand in these streets. I'll let you vote. Once again, the number is 770-847-0536 or email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. Yes! I'm always saying get with the times. Stop acting like you at your mama house. Calling that girl you met at summer camp two states away and your mama screaming out, I know you better not be talking long distance on that phone running up my bill with that old hussy. Well, get with the times with your long distance charges. Presenting Univon. Univon offers unlimited worldwide calling to 60 plus countries for $14.99 a month. No contract, no activation fee, and no cancellation fee. Users can call anytime using their mobile phone or home IP phone. So stop flushing money down the drain. Get more details by clicking Univon's link banner on the DougStewartShow.com or the link on the DougStewartShow.com app. Try out Univon and call your people like you not at your mama house. You've been thinking about starting that online store, right? And you do know e-commerce makes billions a year. That's right, billions with a B. Well, just do it and do it right with my friends at AmeriCommerce. AmeriCommerce is an easy-to-use tool to sell anything online, on Facebook, and through mobile phones. Over 100,000 merchants and website owners have chosen AmeriCommerce to handle their stores and customers. They have the most in-depth features in the industry, which include multiple storefronts, website management from one console, a Facebook shopping application, a mobile-optimized website, and much, much more. Don't let eBay, Amazon, and Zappos get all the money. Get your piece of the pie, too. Click on their link on the DougStewartShow.com or the app link for details. Welcome back to the Doug Stewart Show. Yes! And I think we got them little gremlins and choke the hell out of them. Uh, like pops on Friday. I grab them and I, and I choke them. And I choke the ish out of them. I think we got rid of those little gremlins. This is the Doug Stewart Show. The number is 404-382-0338. And this segment is brought to you by Join 7. Uh, Join 7 is a protection group and they protect against life's little mishaps. So go to the DougStewartShow.com and check out Join 7. All right, the number is 404-382-0338. And we're talking about superheroes, a little conversation about the new TV show Gotham City. And, uh, man, I was a big comic book fan growing up, uh, talking about your favorite superhero, your favorite superhero group. I wish they would do an Aquaman movie, you know, because I think that's, 
And Aquaman is kind of lame. All he does is swim fast as hell, so I guess it's tough to write a script around it. But yeah, and, and I read a couple of these comments uh, earlier uh, on Spreaker.com, and the number is, uh, you can email me uh, at Doug at the Doug Show.com. And also on Spreaker, there's a chat thing set up. And so that's real cool. So on the chat, uh, Kevin, my man, says the number one black superhero of all time was the Brown Hornet. <laughs> the Brown Hornet from... Uh, from Fat Albert. Okay, that's cute. I like I like the Brown Hornet too, though. Uh, Griff. He says, Flash. Honorable mention, Green Lantern. So so clearly, Griff is a, a DC guy. And so DC had their own set of superheroes. And Marvel, you know, had their own set of superheroes. The Marvel superheroes were infinitely better. <laughs> you know, basically, DC, all they got is Superman and Batman. And, and Batman, he don't even got no damn powers. I don't even know if Batman should be classified as a superhero uh, or just a guy that's got some great gadgets and smart as hell and got a lot of money to buy stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, from Polo Negro, he says, so UGA was the holdup? I thought it was the NCAA taking all this time. No. Um, no, the University of Georgia, and talking about Todd Gurley, the University of Jordan, uh, Georgia basically did a preemptive strike on Todd Gurley. Like, evidently, they got this information that, that Gurley may have been taking money for signing autographs, and so they took the initiative. All right, they took the offensive and sat him. And then the NCAA basically came in and was monitoring the situation. The NCAA never said that Todd Gurley suspended or we got this information on Todd Gurley. They have it now, but it's because of Georgia. You know, Georgia basically put this this thing in motion. It wasn't the NCAA. So that's the difference. And so now, uh, once again, I guess I feel like that that Georgia feels like they have enough information about the this, this story. And Todd Gurley, uh, uh, in, 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 uh, in agreement with the university, feel like that they should let the kid back on the field and that he should get back on the field. So that's the story with that. From Scotty, Thor and Captain America were underrated superheroes. My cousin and I pretend to be one or the other. I got my ass whooped when I took one of my mother's good sheets and made a cape out of it. It wasn't long after that I stopped being so crazy about superheroes. The Thor movies that have come out over the last couple of years, I actually like the second one more than I like the first one. Um, and I, I expected a lot more from that Thor character. I was a big Thor fan growing up. Thor was a member of the Avengers, so I followed Thor. And I don't know how much you can do. They kind of brought Thor from the world with the gods uh, in, in his daddy's house, Zeus's house, Olympus, and put him on Earth. I thought that was kind of hokey. <laughs> uh, so then he's got this storyline with some chick he loves on Earth. But, you know, I guess that's what Thor kind of was in the comic book. So, I don't know. I'm not too big of a fan of the Thor movies. All right, let's go ahead and grab this call. I think we've got everything figured out. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. So, your thoughts on Georgia football, on the Atlanta Falcons, on, on anything you want to talk about sports-related, uh, ATL-wise or nationally, and superheroes. And we're talking about Kobe Bryant, the story from Henry Abbott just basically killing Kobe for no apparent reason, on things that we already knew. <laughs> and he's relying totally on sources. <laughs> Bootleg as hell to me. Let's talk to Derek. Derek, thanks for calling the Doug Stewart Show. You there? Yeah, how's it going, Doug? Good, man. Derek, uh, apologize about that problem we had a little bit earlier. Thank you for holding. Oh, no problem. I called to talk about uh, I, I seen that show. How many episodes of Gotham have you seen? Of Gotham? I've only seen the one episode, and I have been I, I've been taping it. Uh, it's on my DVR, so I actually watched the first episode episode last night. So I'm gonna go back and watch the uh, you know, the following episodes uh coming up real soon here. Well, I don't know if she's in the first episode, but that young girl that uh, that's the pickpocket. Yes. She turns into Catwoman. Okay, so that's gonna be Catwoman. Right. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure, and I and that I, now that you mentioned the character, you kind of reminded me. Yeah, I said to myself, either this chick. Pickpocket and everybody's going to be Catwoman, or is it going to be Jada Pinkett? I don't know what Jada Pinkett's role is going to be. Do you know about that? Yeah, she's like a, she's like a, a, a female crime boss. Okay, got you. Got you. Yeah. Okay, cool. And, uh, and I know you were talking about Iron Man. Yeah. You remember his, uh, the, the guy he ran with, the muscle down black guy, uh, uh, Power Man? Yeah, Luke Cage. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about Michael Jaleel White to play him. Oh, uh, I don't know about that. I actually read a story 
um, a while back, and I actually heard some confirmation of it as well, I think, that they were doing a Luke Cage Power Man movie and that Tyrese was going to play Luke Cage. I mean, I didn't know about that. I mean, I guess he kind of looks like the character, you know, with the bald head or whatever. Um, yeah. He going to have to get in the gym, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he going to have to get in the gym if Tyrese can play that role. Now, if he gets bulked up and gets with a trainer, I mean, I think he could do it. I think he could do it. I think that might be good. Yeah, because yeah, if you think about his age, he, he had his, I, you know, I guess you're right if you look at the age of the character. And I'm, I'm going to give you one more, and I don't know I don't know if too many people caught it. Do you remember the uh, Sergeant Rock? Sergeant who? Sergeant Rock. It was, it was like a military cartoon. No, I don't remember him. Comic book. So, so if you look at Sergeant Rock, it was, it was, it was like a in that era, but it was like a military comic book. They actually made a movie about that, but it didn't really go over well. But they, it was like two or three years ago. But it's loosely based on the comic book. Wow. Thanks for the call, Derek. And your call was kind of muffled. Um, and I think that was from your end. I think that was your raggedy-ass phone, Derek. <laughs> that definitely wasn't from our end. Maybe you had me on speaker. If you call the show, this is like uh, Sports Talk Radio call-in show 101. Uh, we need you to turn the radio down. And we don't need you to, you to be on speaker. We need you to be like... Uh, preferably on a landline, but if not, a cell phone, and, and, you know, let's talk kind of clearly. This is the Doug Stewart Show. Thank you for the call, Derek. The number is 404-382-0338. Yeah, Luke Cage, Power Man. Uh, probably the first black superhero that I can remember. I don't know if there was one before him, and I don't know who came first, either him or the Black Panther. And the Black Panther was, uh, I think the dude was from Africa. The guy that, that that was the Black Panther, I think he was originally from Africa or something like that, and Thus, the Black Panther. That's stereotypical back in 1960. <laughs> this is the Doug Stewart Show. So I heard some rumblings about the Black Panther being in the new Avenger movie. As well as I mentioned earlier, I heard about Vision and Scarlet Witch and some of these characters you may not be familiar with if, you're, uh, if you didn't read the comic. But yeah, if you read the Avengers, you know about all these characters I'm mentioning. But yeah, I heard Luke Cage and Tyrese. Now, kind of an issue I have for uh you know superheroes is they need to be superheroes <laughs> they need to be superheroes in stature and size and all of that uh that's why it, it was kind of freaky to me when i was growing up in the the original uh, uh not superman but uh the original incredible hulk with bill bixby okay and uh, lou ferrigno played the incredible hulk but Lou Ferrigno was at best, what, 6'2", and I don't know if they did crazy camera work or whatever to make him appear bigger than he really was. But I'm saying this to myself, how are you going to get a real person to play the Hulk? Because in my mind, the Hulk was like 30 feet tall, <laughs> like 3,000 pounds or whatever, and just massive. So that was always kind of freaky. But uh, you've seen uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger play Conan. I thought you had to get a guy like Arnold Schwarzenegger to play Conan. That wasn't out of the, the reach of thinking. As far as a big muscle-bound guy playing Conan. So Tyrese, I think Tyrese is probably like 5'9". <laughs> you know? Uh, so he's going to have to get in the gym. He's going to have to wear platform shoes. He's going to have to do something. I don't know what it is, but I don't know about that. So we'll see how that goes down. This is the Doug Stewart Show talking a little bit about superheroes. I mentioned earlier this story where this guy, Henry Abbott, uh, just kills Kobe and ESB in the magazine. And Kobe just played it to the left as, as uh, superstar players do. No big deal, whatever. You can say what you want. I mean, because Kobe's career speaks for itself. So he shouldn't even have to respond to some crap like this. But the story was, you know, in, in general, the story was crappy. Because it's, it's all based on sources, which I have a problem with. And not only that, it's talking about stuff that we already knew. Like, why would you write a story on, on rumor? You're writing a story on rumor. The rumor is, is that guys don't want to play with Kobe. Do you have a guy definitively that's going to come on record and say, uh, you know, guys don't like playing with Kobe? And even if you are a guy in the NBA and you tell somebody that guys don't like playing with Kobe, that just might be your experience with somebody you're talking to. Okay, there's, there's 15 guys on 30 different teams in the NBA. I mean, is that just like across the board? Not one player in the NBA wants to play with Kobe? So it's all like, uh, you know, uh, subjective and rumor and innuendo. I think it's just crappy journalism, man. I wish I could get this guy on the phone 
Uh, this guy like this probably wouldn't even come on the phone. ESPN people won't come on my show anyway, probably because, you know, uh, I keeps it real. And they know that I'm very hostile. <laughs> so the chances of getting one of these ESPN guys uh, on the show outside of my man. Uh, so I got a couple people. Scoop Jackson might come on, but Scoop's not there full time. So it, it, the chances of me questioning this guy on his motives and where he's getting his information. And don't you think it's it's uh, it's uh, unresponsible journalism to write a story like this? I mean, that's the type of questions I would ask dudes like this. Are you kidding me? You're writing a story on complete conjecture, you know, and rumor and innuendo. I mean, that's crappy. <laughs> that is horrible. And it's not because I'm a Kobe fan. I'm not really, and this is kind of a dicey uh, thing to explain to people. I'm not really a Kobe fan. I respect the fact that Kobe's one of the best players to play this game over the last 30 years. And like I said earlier, you're talking Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, and then Kobe's in the conversation some somewhere after those guys. He is. I don't think that I'd probably want to go out and kick it with Kobe because Kobe threw his mom and him under the bus about that house and, you know, allegedly took some ass and, and you know, a bad dude. And, and just the fact that nobody gets along with him and he's this uh, problem and he's a ball hog. I get that. I, I'm not saying I think Kobe's a dude you want to go kick it with, but you got to respect his game. <laughs> Respect that man's game. Yes, respect that man's game. And don't report and say things about him just because you're a Laker hater or because you're trying to write a story, some tantalizing story that people are going to click on and read. I mean, just keep it real, man. Just keep it real. This is the Doug Stewart Show, and damn it, we going to keep it real around here. Don't go away. Up next on the Doug Stewart Show, we talk a little bit about Todd Gurley and what's going on with Georgia sports, uh, Kobe, whatever you want to get into that we've already talk about we can do it on today's show and we're also talking about superheroes all right sports talk for the people the doug stewart show the doug stewart show is off and running but just like every company we need sponsors would you like to work with one of the livest most dynamic and recognized sports talk show personalities in america by the way that's me getting in on the ground floor well call us at 770 877- 847-0536 or email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com and let's do business. From the smallest company in Atlanta to the biggest brands nationally and worldwide, Shouty. People know me and the Stews brand in these streets. I'll let you vote. Once again, the number is 770-847-0536 or email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. Yes. This your folk, Doug Stewart. Want to protect you and your family from life's unexpected mishaps? Then join Seven. Join Seven is a prepaid legal company under the umbrella of the Protection Group. Join Seven is the only group benefit or motor club in the U.S. that offers auto reimbursement coverage, key replacement coverage, roadside assistance, gives you a current metafile, prescription savings, and a fully encompassed prepaid legal benefit that includes identity theft. They got your back. The average combined cost to purchase these benefits individually is over 850 bucks a year. Join today and take advantage of all seven for $17 a month. They've been around for over 20 years, so check them out by clicking on the banner link on my page, thedougstewartshow.com, or the app. Just go ahead and join seven. I'm always saying get with the times. Stop acting like you at your mama house, calling that girl you met at summer camp two states away, and your mama screaming out, I know you better not be talking long distance running up my bill with that little huzzy girl. Well, get with the times with the long-distance charges. Presenting Univon. Univon offers unlimited worldwide calling to 60-plus countries for $14.99 a month. No contract, no activation fee, and no cancellation fee. Users can call anytime using their mobile phone or home IP phone. So stop flushing money down the drain. Get more details by clicking Univon's link banner on the DougStewartShow.com or the link on the DougStewartShow.com app. Try out Univon and call your peoples like you not at your mama house. Now back to the realest sports talk show in America, the Doug Stewart Show. Welcome back to the Doug Stewart Show. This is a Word on the Street Wednesday. And uh, thank you so much for joining your boy. Are you telling people? Are you passing the word? Uh, spreading the love of the Doug Stewart Show. Make sure you tell at least 27 people 
damn it, tell everybody you know, but tell specifically 27 people each day about the live is the most fun, the most interactive sports talk show in America. I didn't mention this today, and I, I did yesterday, and I forgot to, but I will right now. Uh, the Doug Stewart Show is expanding. We need a digital media specialist. That's right. If you are in college or if you have a child or, or your son or daughter's in college and they're studying uh, digital media, uh, have them get in contact with us. We got a position for you, man. And what the position basically is is updating the website, the app, uh, pulling the analytics, the numbers, um, that type of stuff. You know, so adding banners, taking away banners, just maintenance of the websites and the social media. So uh, if you'd like to be down with the Doug Stewart Show, we'd like to be down with you and uh, work with you. And uh, it'd be good for you to put on your resume uh, or someone leaving college and, and trying to find a real job and getting paid money. Because this job right now, it paid money. Hopefully at some point it will. But uh, it's a great opportunity to intern uh, with the Doug Stewart Show. We're doing big things. So we're looking for a digital media specialist. If you are know someone that's interested, email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show dot com and we will make that happen. All right. Four zero four three eight two zero three three eight. And this segment is brought to you by uh, the classic uh, or not the classic part, the Univon. Great long distance, not like you at your mama's house. So go to their uh, banner link on the Doug Stewart Show dot com and check them out. All right. So uh, Ty Gurley was suspended by the University of Georgia as it investigated allegations And uh, the star running backs receive payments for signed memorabilia or not. And so uh, they uh, basically sent all the information they found in their investigation to the NCAA. Uh, Georgia suspended them, not the NCAA. So Georgia suspended them. So they feel like that they've collected enough information to feel like that Todd Gurley uh, hasn't done anything illegal or better yet probably that they can't prove that Todd Gurley has done anything illegal. And so hopefully Gurley's going to be back on the field for the Georgia Bulldogs very soon. So we'll keep our eye on that. Also, the Georgia Bulldogs off this week. You know they got the world's biggest cocktail party thingy going on uh, next weekend, November 1st, against Florida. Uh, And so it'll be great if they can get Todd Gurley back. They've got this bye week, and so they can get everything in line for their star running back, uh, the leader up until the point where he stopped playing for the Heisman to get back on the field and help Georgia win some ball games. Uh, Georgia Tech travels to Pitt this weekend, taking on the Pitt Panthers. And uh, and also the, the Atlanta Falcons, they're on the road this weekend in a big way. They're playing in London. And it's this whole initiative by the NFL to, I guess, enlighten people abroad about the game of football in the NFL. And there's conversation about possibly one day uh, relocating a team there or uh, putting a franchise there in London. To help grow the brand and I guess eventually ultimately make more money. I get that. I don't like the whole thing about teams, you know, a team in London. Uh, I'm kind of old school in that manner and traditional, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, We had teams in baseball and we've got teams in baseball and the majors playing in Canada. But that's just right across the border. This is a whole different thing here. We're going across the water. Yes. And the big thing about this game this weekend between the Falcons and the Lions taking place in London is the game comes on at 9.30. Yeah, so we're going to get our West Coast football watching thing going on this weekend. All right, so the Falcons and the Lions, 9.30 a.m. Sunday morning. So if you don't go to church, if you're going to be a heathen this weekend and don't go to church, you can sit in your bed and watch the Falcons, man, while you get up at 9.30 a.m. Sunday morning. Here's some messages on the chat line. This one's from King50. He says, uh, Kobe wouldn't have one ring without Shaq and three other seven-footers, Bynum, Odom, and Gasol. King 50, uh, I don't... (sighs) Oh, my gosh. And I almost hate to defend, to sound like I'm defending Kobe, but let's just be honest. Let's just, just, you know, call out the facts here about this thing. Kobe Bryant plays on a basketball team. Magic Johnson played on a basketball team. Would you make the same statement about Magic Johnson winning his five rings if he didn't have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? You could probably make the same statement. So what's your point? <laughs> what's your point? Seriously. I mean, that's just a dumbass uh, message right there, King 50. Matter of fact, if we could suspend King 50 for a couple of days from the chat line, I wish we could. Here's another one from King 50. Jerry West handed over Gasol for free. 
to the Lakers. Uh, no, he didn't. He didn't hand him over for free. It was a trade involved. That's the big thing about all of that talk about LeBron and free agency. It's a big difference between that and a trade. Two organizations agreed on a trade. <laughs> yes. Now, it does seem like we got the better end of that. And I'm saying we as a Laker fan. Uh, but damn it, it is what it is. We great negotiators. Uh, King50 also says, don't forget about Falcon. Oh, yeah, the Black Falcon. And I don't even know if he was the Black Falcon talking about the superhero. And the Falcon actually was in the past. And if you're just joining us, we're talking about superheroes. That's kind of like the topic of the day or the du- the Dougie Daily question. And so, yeah, the Falcon played in this past Captain America. And it was his role was pretty good. Uh, his costume wasn't what I remember the Falcon's costume being back in the day. You know, the costume that the Falcon had black back in the day was uh was like red and white and he had these uh like bird like wings or whatever and made him fly and this guy in this movie uh, this black dude that played the Falcon he had these mechanical wings and they didn't look like real wings at all and so it was different and I guess you had to modernize that thing a little bit so I got it and from what I understand that character is going to have a much bigger role in the next Captain America um and it's the brother that played uh uh, I don't know his name, obviously. It's the brother that played the role of Tupac in the Biggie Smalls movie. That dude, that brother's name. But he played Falcon in the past Captain America. From Juan Cruz, he says, laugh my ass off. Cage is horrible. <laughs> oh, yeah, and it is funny. And you are listening to the Doug Stewart Show. We had basically three. And, and, and uh, uh, my man King 50 reminded me about another uh, black superhero. We had three. We had Luke Cage. Okay, Power Man, you had the Falcon, and then you also had the Panther, the Black Panther. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the most prevalent probably was Power Man, Luke Cage, and he didn't really even have on a suit. <laughs> yeah, he didn't really have on a costume, you know? They gave, they gave the brother just like some raggedy-ass jeans, and I think he was wearing sneakers, and I guess he had his shirt open. He had a bright-ass yellow shirt that he always wore. Uh, with his with his shirt open and his taco meat showing and a bandana. <laughs> Why they do us like that? Why they do us like that? We can't get a cool ass suit like Iron Man or or uh, or uh, Hawkeye or the Vision or or Fantastic Four. We we need some some spandex. They didn't even get a man no spandex. The man was wearing jeans. Like why you do us like that? Why why you do us like that? Seriously. Ah, oh, damn, but yeah, so I mentioned a little bit earlier that uh, Power Man is actually probably, uh, Luke Cage is reportedly going to be played in a movie by Tyrese. Yeah, the singer, actor, it's pretty good, starred in Baby Boy probably 15, 20 years ago, which I heard a story this morning about that, I'm not going to even get into it, but yeah, interesting story uh, in talking about comic books and, and superheroes and that type of thing, 404 404- Three eight two zero three three eight four zero four three eight two zero three three eight. This is the Doug Stewart Show, and uh, this is the liveest, the most interactive sports talk show in America. And we are doing big things, man. Uh, last night, did I even mention it yesterday? I think I mentioned it yesterday, but it became official last night. I think I even said that at some point tonight uh, we're going to go over the twenty thousand mark as far as listens. And yes, in a little bit less or a little bit over four weeks. We have surpassed, and this is just on Spreaker. Just on Spreaker, we have surpassed over 20,000 listens on the Doug Stewart Show. It's it's hard for me to explain analytics and numbers and this, that, and the other, and and, uh, ratings and listens and that type of thing, but that's a lot of listens. That's almost like a record or something. 20,000 listens to the Doug Stewart Show in just under five weeks. So that's tremendous, and that's just on Spreaker. Once again, uh, with all the numbers, with the DougStewartShow.com and the the apps, um, uh, we we have over, I'm going to guess, probably over 30,000 listens. So that's tremendous. We're doing big things, and it speaks to the, to the Doug Stewart Show. It speaks to my staff, to the team. It also speaks to the brand of the Two Live Stews and people wanting to get their real, you know, you know, straight to the point, no chaser, sports talk. And so uh, we're very viable, and we really appreciate all the love and all the support that we've been getting for the show and you telling people about it. We really, really do appreciate it. And, I, and my producer is like, man, you, 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 uh, you, you say you appreciate it and you tell people thank you 
like a million times, and I can't say it enough. Thank you very much. Uh, but we're giving you a good product at the same time as well. This is a good-ass product. This is a unique, great, good product that we're delivering you here on the Doug Stewart Show. That's right. We are delivering you a great product, and uh, we're having a lot of fun doing it, and so thank you for supporting the show. 404 382 0338. My man James Cooper says uh, Luke Cage was an ex con. <laughs> what? That's right. I forgot about that. Yes. Luke Luke Cage was an ex con, I believe. I need to verify that. I can't just go on what my man James Cooper said. But I think he's right. Why, why was the only brother superhero an ex con? <laughs> yeah, straight out of Oz. I mean, why did he do us like that? Don't do us like that, man. Come on. Let, let, let. Let our character, let the black character get hit with some gamma rays and or bit by a spider or something. You know, they probably would have the black, you know, uh, uh, superhero get bit by a roach and be Roach Man. That's that's how they do us. Don't do us like that. <laughs> Don't do us like that, like that Marvel and DC and and you writers of uh of uh superheroes and comics. Don't do us like that, Stan Lee. Come on, man. Why the brother gotta just be getting out of jail in this costume and some raggedy jeans? And some old Converse. <laughs> He's wearing some Chuck Taylors. I think Luke Cage is wearing Chuck Taylors, man. Why do you do us like that? Don't do us like that. This is the Doug Stewart Show. And uh, this is a Word on the Street Wednesday. Yeah, Word on the Street is that Tyrese is going to play Luke Cage in the movie, if there is a movie. You can Google that, and that's all over the Internet. I really haven't been able to verify if that's the case or not, but I don't know. And I don't know how excited I would be to see a Luke Cage movie anyway. Like I said... He didn't really have no powers. He was just a tough dude that 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 that, that probably came straight off the black exploitation films, and that's probably where it was derived from during the era where that cartoon and that uh, that comic came about. Uh, all the black exploitation films going on at that time. Uh, let's do us a black superhero. Mm, we gonna give him a costume? No. Let's put him in some jeans. Mm, how about some cool boots coming up to his knees? Nah, Converse. High tops. Chuck Taylor. <laughs> Don't do us like that. All right. Up next on the Doug Stewart Show, we'll talk a little bit about this, uh, this story written for ESB in the magazine uh, from uh, Henry Abbott just crushing Kobe. And now everybody's talking on the chat and on Twitter about Kobe and, you know, did the Lakers steal free agents and this, that, and the other. And, you know, so we'll get into that a little bit more, talking Georgia sports. Uh, anything you want to talk about, this is the Doug Stewart Show. I'm always saying get with the times. Stop acting like you at your mama house, calling that girl you met at summer camp two states away, and your mama screaming out, I know you better not be talking long distance running up my bill with that little hussy girl. Well, get with the times with the long distance charges. Presenting Unibond. Univon offers unlimited worldwide calling to 60 plus countries for $14.99 a month. No contract, no activation fee, and no cancellation fee. Users can call anytime using their mobile phone or home IP phone. So stop flushing money down the drain. Get more details by clicking Univon's link banner on the DougStewartShow.com or the link on the DougStewartShow.com app. Try out Univon and call your peoples like you not at your mama house. All right, I know the deal. You've been thinking about starting that online store, right? And you do know e-commerce makes billions a year. That's right, billions with a B. Well, just do it and do it right with my friends at AmeriCommerce. AmeriCommerce is an easy-to-use tool to sell anything online, on Facebook and through mobile phones. Over 100,000 merchants and website owners have chosen AmeriCommerce to handle their stores and customers. They have the most in-depth features in the industry, which include multiple storefronts, website management from one source, a Facebook shopping application, a mobile-optimized website, and much more. Don't let eBay, Amazon, and Zappos get all the money. Get your piece of the pie, too. Click on the link on the DougStewartShow.com or the app link for details. The Doug Stewart Show is off and running, but just like every company, we need sponsors. Would yours like to work with one of the livest, most dynamic, and recognized sports talk show personalities in America? By the way, that's me. Getting in on the ground floor? 
Well, call us at 770-847-0536 or email me at Doug at thedougstewartshow.com and let's do business. From the smallest company in Atlanta to the biggest brands nationally and worldwide, Shouty. People know me and the Stews brand in these streets. I'll let you both. Once again, the number is 770-847-0536 or email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. Yes! CJ, we got to get rid of this. <laughs> it sounds almost too uh, sultry. It's almost like some late night DJ, FM DJ stuff. We high, strong around here. We upbeat. This is the Doug Stewart Show. Thanks for joining your folk. Uh, welcome back to the show. The number is 404-382-0338. And you can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. And I'm just tripping off all these messages on the chat line on Spreaker.com. Have you told 28 people about the show? Huh? Seriously, have you told 20? Have you told the daily allotment of people, uh, of your daily allotment of, of people that you need to about the Doug Stewart Show? If you haven't, make sure you do that. Tell 29 people <laughs> about the live is the most interactive sports talk show in America. Uh, this segment is brought to you by uh, Fandu. Fandu. Fandu has one day fantasy sports for as low as a dollar. Uh, they also have these things on FanDuel, and you can check it out by going to my website. Go to my website and check this out about FanDuel, and click on their banner link on my website. But they also do these things on FanDuel where they have, like, these big pot games. Like, they'll have a one-game uh, fantasy game, uh, and, and everybody, you know, whoever enters this game and as many people in, uh, they have a big pot. And so you can win, you know, thousands of dollars or uh, or hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? So they have all these type of little interesting little ways to approach fantasy sports. You know, you can do head-to-head. You can get into a league. Where a league could be a week. A league could be the entire season. So it's real fun, and it's not restrictive, all right? You can you can do it for as long and as short as you want. So go to my website, thedougstewartshow.com, and get for more information on FanDu. All right, the number is 404-382-382. 0338 having a little fun talking about superheroes. Uh, I mentioned earlier in today's show that I saw the first episode of uh, Gotham City and I've been recording it. I haven't been watching it live. So this I, I think they're already probably like the third or fourth episode and Jada Pinkett's in it and she plays like this crime boss and uh, that I just realized earlier from talking to one of the callers. Uh, there's a little chick in it that evidently is going to turn into Catwoman. She's like a pickpocket. I didn't mention that when I first talked about it. It was strange they had this chick in black, and she was like one of these raw wall crawler type ladies, acrobatic. And uh, I don't know why I didn't put that together because I was an avid fan of Batman growing up and Bruce Wayne and, and uh, Robin and those guys, the, the TV show Batman. So, and, and Catwoman was acrobatic. So this chick was flipping all over the place and climbing these walls and pickpocketing people. And so ev- evidently this person is going to be Catwoman in future episodes and then Commissioner Gordon and uh, Bruce Wayne. They actually showed and Bruce Wayne's parents got murdered when he was a kid, probably 10 or 11 years old. So very interesting story, very interesting show, very much like, like Smallville was for, for Superman. So got me thinking about superheroes and you know, for the most part, dudes listen to the show. A lot of women listen to the show, too. We have a great woman listenership or lady wom- listenership. But, you know, probably 75, 80% dudes listen to the show. So we read comic books. We did all those things that kids do. And so having a little fun uh, talking about superheroes and comic books and superhero groups. My favorite group I mentioned was the Avengers. And then closely behind the Avengers, I collected a lot of Fantastic Four comic books. Okay? Uh, and so... When the, 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 the Fantastic Four movie came out a couple of years ago, somewhat of a disappointment. 
Uh, and I don't know what I was expecting. I was expecting a lot more. And I mentioned how another disappointment was Ghost Rider. I never even saw Daredevil. Everybody said that was so bad with Ben Affleck. Uh, they said that Catwoman had her own movie, which was strange to me because Catwoman was a villain. <laughs> yeah. So the thing was, was dead in the water from the very start. Halle Berry starred in it. And I guess the whole thing about that is they were going to sell the movie because Halle Berry looks sexy in this black little jumpsuit, uh, bodysuit type thing. And that's not enough to sell a movie. You could have fine-ass Halle Berry, and she could be, I was about to say butt naked. No, Halle Berry butt naked in an entire movie would sell. <laughs> that would sell. But you could have, you could have Halle Berry and, uh, uh, or whatever in a movie. Uh, but the movie's got to be good, and it's got to be about a superhero, right? Like, is there another instance of a superhero type movie about a villain other than this Catwoman movie? I don't know of any. And it's probably not a good bet. <laughs> like, where'd they get money from to do that? Eh, like, what studio in Hollywood came up with a million dollar budget to do a, 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 a movie about a villain? You know, I don't know. I would, I would think there's more intriguing villains out there to do a movie about if you're going to focus on a villain but they focused on Catwoman and it was horrible it was horrible almost killed the whole genre this is the Doug Stewart show the number is 404-382-0338 404-382-0338 is the number to the show uh here's a message from John Marshall he says Dougie I know we're in superheroes but have you ever noticed that the vast majority of villains had, have, had no powers. Just some diabolically uh, minded jokers who figured out the heroes were weaknesses, the hero's weaknesses, and tried to take over the world. That's a very good point. Yeah, a lot of the superheroes are kind of like Batman, or the villains are kind of like Batman. They really have no distinguishable uh, superhero trait or ability. You know, they aren't from another planet or they aren't, you know, uh, super strong or something like that. They didn't get hit with gamma rays. Like the Joker is just a smart dude. And Lex Luthor, he's just a smart dude. Yeah, that's a good point. Catwoman, I guess she's, you know, she's kind of like an acrobat, but she got no superhero strength or nothing like that really that I know of. That's a very good point Uh, from J.B. Jennings, he says, what about Meteor Man? <laughs> what Meteor Man, what was that from? Was that, uh, what was the guy name in um, uh, Robert Townsend? Was that Robert Townsend? That's old school for your ass, Meteor Man, yeah. Uh, Chuck Down Frank, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Chuck Down Frank says, um, I don't know what the hell Chuck Down Frank's saying. Chuck Down Frank don't speak Spanish, but Chuck Down Frank on the chat line <laughs> He's got this message in, in Spanish. Chuck Town Frank is from James Island, South Carolina. They don't speak no damn. They never even saw a Spanish person until they got out of college. <laughs> from James Island, South Carolina. Come on, man. Come on, man. Chuck Town Frank's from uh, James Island, South Carolina, which is, you know, basically Charleston, South Carolina. And uh, where Roddy White, the wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons, is from. Him and Roddy are people, actually, I, I believe. And uh, so, yeah, I don't get that, that message on the chat line. Uh, all right, the number is 404-382-0338. That's the number to the show, 404-382-0338 is the number to the show. Uh, speaking of superheroes, last night, I think The Flash aired and didn't catch that. And for some reason, I'm not as geeked up to see that. I was a, I guess you could call me a fan of The Flash when I was growing up because The Flash was cool. It was a fast-ass dude. You know, dude was faster than everybody else. And, uh... You know, if you saw the X-Men, I think it was the X-Men, the last X-Men movie, or maybe it was the Wolverine movie, and they had Quicksilver in there. And that may have been, if you saw the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Quicksilver is basically the Marvel version of Flash. He's fast as hell. He's so stinking fast. They did this scene where I guess all of this happened like in a millisecond where he ran around this room and the cinematography on how they did this thing and he... Like, you know, wrote a mustache on somebody's face and poured some coffee and drank it and, you know, slapped somebody on the ass. And all of this happened. They showed it in slow motion. And it was just fantastic the way they did this thing. Yeah, so 
So that was real, real awesome the way they did that. Stan Lee and the people at Marvel. That was fantastic. But for some reason, I'm not really geeked up to see this, this Flash thing. I don't know. It's because I seem like I have a bias against all, everything outside of Batman and Superman. DC. And I mentioned earlier, and you're listening to the Doug Shore Show, I mentioned earlier that DC was the comic book. And, okay, so DC is Action League. Uh, uh, Justice League, actually. Growing up, you remember on Saturday mornings you had the Justice League? And so the Justice League was, uh, they came together, and it was Batman, Superman, they kind of led the thing. And then you had Wonder Woman, and Aquaman, and Hawkman, and Zan and Jaina, the Wonder Twins. <laughs> yeah, that's what you had. And so you didn't really... Uh, uh, for for once again, for comic book superhero aficionados, like the Justice League and DC Comics in general, once again, outside of Superman and Batman, and once again, you can question Batman because Batman was just a dude anyway that had a lot of money and was able to buy gadgets. Yeah, outside of those two, DC was kind of lame compared to Avenger, uh, 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 compared to Marvel and to the, to the heroes in Marvel. And Marvel just... You go up and down the line. They got a million different characters. And, you know, when you're rolling out Wonder Woman and a dude whose real strength isn't realized until he's under the water. <laughs> and Aquaman, even though I think Aquaman would be kind of cool. Um, you remember the man from Atlantis back in the day? Yeah, I think that's that would be kind of cool. Man from Atlantis, Patrick Duffy. Oh, I just went back just now. It's crazy how my mind can think back to 40 years ago, and I can't remember Achilles Smith's name. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, in comparison, DC to Marvel, there's no comparison. And so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I'm not geeked up to see this Flash thing. You know, so maybe I will go back on demand and check it out. We'll see. All right, up next on the Doug Short Show. Uh, in the news, Ray Rice is in the news. Some new movement on that story, as well as uh, Michael Sam. And I've never really talked about Michael Sam, had the opportunity to talk about Michael Sam since I've been doing this show and that whole thing. And, you know, I talk a little bit about it. Michael Sam is on the street. <laughs> he is. He's on the street. Yeah. He's just like me and you on the street. He's not in the NFL anymore. So we'll talk a little bit about Michael Sam and that story. Don't go away. Sports Talk with Hot Sauce, the Doug Stewart Show. Stewart Show is off and running, but just like every company, we need sponsors. Would you like to work with one of the livest, most dynamic, and recognized sports talk show personalities in America? By the way, that's me. Getting in on the ground floor? Well, call us at 770-847-0536 or email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com and let's do business. From the smallest company in Atlanta to the biggest brands nationally and worldwide, Shouty. People know me and the Stews brand in these streets. I'll let you vote. Once again, the number is 770-847-0536 or email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. Yes! I'm always saying get with the times. Stop acting like you at your mama house. Calling that girl you met at summer camp two states away and your mama screaming out, I know you better not be talking long distance on that phone running up my bill with that old hussy. Well... Get with the times with the long distance charges. Presenting Univon. Univon offers unlimited worldwide calling to 60 plus countries for $14.99 a month. No contract, no activation fee, and no cancellation fee. Users can call anytime using their mobile phone or home IP phone. So stop flushing money down the drain. Get more details by clicking Univon's link banner on the DougStewartShow.com or the link on the DougStewartShow.com app. Try out Univon and call your people like you not at your mama house. You've been thinking about starting that online store, right? And you do know e-commerce makes billions a year. That's right, billions with a B. Well, just do it and do it right with my friends at AmeriCommerce. AmeriCommerce is an easy-to-use tool to sell anything online, on Facebook, and through mobile phones. Over 100,000 merchants and website owners have chosen AmeriCommerce to handle their stores and customers. They have the most in-depth features in the industry, which include multiple storefronts, website management from one console, a Facebook shopping application, a mobile-optimized website, and much, much more. 
Don't let eBay, Amazon, and Zappos get all the money. Get your piece of the pie, too. Click on their link on the DougStewartShow.com or the app link for details. He's nobody's sports talk puppet, the Doug Stewart Show. Welcome back to the Doug Stewart Show, the most fun, the most entertaining, <laughs> the livest sports talk show in America. Yeah, so make sure you tell 30 people about the livest, the biggest, the most fun, the most intriguing sports talk show in America. Yes, make sure you do that. The number is 404-382-0338. And you can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. All right, so a couple little stories out there. And we're talking about superheroes. That's the Dougie Daily question. Having a lot of fun with that. Reminiscing about superheroes and Marvel comics and DC comics and Superman and punk-ass Batman with no powers and Luke Cage wearing high-top Adidas and all of that type stuff. That's what we're doing today. Having a lot of fun with that in honor of the TV show Gotham City. Uh, chronicling the life of uh, a young Bruce Wayne. It's kind of like a prequel to Batman. And I think it's a pretty good show, so you should check it out. Uh, so we're doing that. We're also talking about these little sports stories. I'll grab your calls at 404-382-0338. But uh, haven't mentioned uh, uh, the story with Ray Rice. Yeah, Baltimore Raven running back uh, uh, Ray Rice, who was terminated from his contract, is basically suing the NFL um, and is suing the team and wanting to get paid the remainder of his contract, which is like two point three or $3.5 million. Um, and basically his claim is that the Ravens shouldn't have been able to, the Ravens and the NFL shouldn't have been able to uh, penalize him twice, okay? And this is an agreement that they have in the collection bargaining agreement that you can't be penalized twice for the same crime. Now, if you remember, he was suspended for the first couple of games of the season, and then he was supposed to be allowed to come back and play. But the NFL uh, and the Ravens are saying, uh, and not more in particular the NFL in, in suspending him, the NFL is saying that, the new information from the new tape that showed him punching his old lady in the mouth in the elevator is new evidence. And so they're changing their mind. Um, I think Ray Rice is going to win this. Uh, not only that, because Ray Rice is exactly right if the wording in the, in the collective bargaining agreement between the players and the league is that you can only be uh, fined or, or, or penalized once for some egregious action, then... Not only is he right about that, he was penalized and he was supposed to be able to come back after those first couple of games, but Ray Rice is going to argue, and there's already proof out there to the fact that he told them he hit the chick in the mouth. Yes, Ozzie Newsom is on record. He's on camera saying that Ray Rice didn't lie to him about anything and that they knew all of what was told and that what happened in this elevator. So I think the NFL is going to lose this. I do. I think he's got a good-ass claim. You know Ray Rice has got this David Cornwell guy who's one of the best attorneys, and he's represented all these athletes. Uh, yeah, I think he's got a case. This is double jeopardy at its finest, okay? And don't get mad at me and try to, you know, uh, drag me under the bus all day, this, that, and the other, uh, because you saw the tape. You didn't need to sell the tape or see the tape. I told you I hit her in the mouth. <laughs> Yes, yes, so I think Ray Rice has a case in this, and also, uh, yesterday it came down the pike that Michael Sam, yes, the first openly gay player to uh, get drafted uh, and play on the practice squad, was cut yesterday from the Dallas Cowboys, and I, and I had to think about how I wanted to phrase that, because I think for a lot of times... Uh, for most of the time, they've been saying, and the media has been saying, Michael Sam, the first openly gay player in the NFL. He's not in the NFL. I guess technically he's in the NFL because he's on the practice squad, but he never played a down in the league. And so he was drafted. Uh, some people will tell you as a favor to a Missouri kid uh, by the St. Louis Rams and Jeff Fisher, and mm, that didn't work out during preseason. So he was cut. And then the Dallas Cowboys, some people will tell you the reason they picked him up is because – the Dallas Cowboys are in the business of, of making headlines, you know, America's team type thing, and that didn't work out. He never was brought up to the to the active roster. So my thing about Michael Sam, and let me just say this, I ain't got nothing against Michael Sam 
or gay people. I know several gay people. I'm acquainted with several gay people. And that's your lifestyle. Whatever you do behind closed doors is your business, period. If you like to get with dudes as opposed to women, hey, do you. <laughs> that's, that's your business. That got nothing to do with me. I think that the big story about this story is the fact that how uh, the media is and some of their uh, tail wagging the dog aspects, the, the aspects of tail wagging the dog uh, syndrome in media. You know, and we see that all, you know, over the last couple of days with some of these stories. And this, to me, is even more so to that point of ESPN in particular, the puppet factory, the, the, the tail wagging the dog. I mean, this wasn't really even a story. I mean, to me, this really wasn't even a story. I guess it's, you know, for, for, uh, for him to come out and make this proclamation before the draft uh, in the manner in which he did. I guess it was somewhat of a story then. Um, but after that, I don't think that it should have got all the press and all the conversation that it did. That, that it did. And I think people are, are, are kind of uh, underselling people or guys in particular, you know. I don't think it would be an issue at all. And it hadn't shown to be an issue when he was in Missouri uh, with the Tigers. Uh, I haven't heard any issues that have come result of him being in the locker room uh, with the Dallas Cowboys and the St. Louis Rams. Uh, I do think that it might be to some people. I think some people might think it's kind of awkward to be in a locker room with a gay guy. I will say that. And the reason is because if the guy is gay and he loves guys, then rationale is that he may be attracted to some people in the locker room. I guess you could go make a far reach to that, maybe. I don't know. But even that is, you know, he's not going to attack anybody. He's not going to try to grab anybody's ass. So it's really just a non-story to me. I mean, the whole thing has just been a non-story. And he got an SB for a Courage Award or whatever. Courage Award for what? What? Uh, for coming out of the closet? People have been coming out of the closet forever. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that, that award has usually been given to someone in much dire circumstances or a much bigger, in my opinion, life story. So I just think it's all about nothing, man, on this Michael Sam thing. And it looks like he can't play. <laughs> it looks like he can't play. And this is what everybody was saying before the draft. He can't play. And this is why he didn't get drafted until a couple of picks before the end of the draft. It's because he can't play. And I know me putting it like that sounds kind of harsh. Uh, once again, I don't care that he's gay. I don't care nothing about his background. Can you play football? If Michael Sam had the talent of Jadavian Clowney and could get you, uh, let's just say something obnoxious. If Michael Sam could show in training camp or before the draft even that he could get you four or five sacks a game, Man, the NFL would be looking for every gay Michael Sam type player in the history of college football. A am I lying? <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, just way, made way too much of, man. Way too much of. And just like I, I said about Tim Tebow, he can't play. There's nothing personal. He can't play. And it appears that Michael Sam can't play. And that's uh, uh, really, that's what it should be, all be about. That's what it should all be about, man. Nobody cares about, you know, what dude does in uh, his own personal time. That's ridiculous. Let's talk to Triple Digit. Thanks for calling the Doug Stewart Triple Digit. What you got? Okay, we got you now. Yes. How you doing, man? I'm awesome. awesome. I just had to, like, tell four more people because I had only tw told 26 earlier. Ah. Now I had to tell 30, <laughs> so. <laughs> no, I think it, I don't know if it's because I'm from D.C. or, you know, I grew up, you know, late 70s, so early 80s. I was more of a DC Comics. I used to have the sheets with the Justice League. So you were more so of a DC fan than a than a Marvel comic fan. Yeah. I wow. Maybe it was just I don't know. I mean, mom growing up with just mom and not with dad or whatever. So you know, maybe it was like, oh, there's Superman and right. Aquaman and Wonder Woman and all that stuff. So I don't know, maybe. But I'm excited. Um, was it 2016? They're doing that Batman versus Superman. Yeah. And it's going to be the start of the Justice League. Yeah. To kind of come back. Uh, now, now, now so, it. you know what, that, that whole concept, and I said it earlier, I'm not really a, a DC fan in comparison to Marvel, but the whole concept of bringing back all of those characters from the Justice League, I think that would be kind of cool. I would love to see how they do Wonder Woman. I would love to see how they did, uh, would do Aquaman. I think that would be kind of cool. 
Yeah, I mean, when I watched, what was that show years ago, Entourage, and they did the whole Aquaman type thing, I was like, oh, when are they going to actually do this on the big screen? But, right. Uh, we'll see how it turns out. I mean, I hope it's, you know, just because that's what, it, you know, my youth was like. Um, yeah. And I watched the first episode of Gotham as well, and I'm hooked. I mean, that, um, and it was Selena Kyle or whatever is Catwoman. You can tell by the names. I think, was it Harvey Dent? You'll see he'll be... He'll turn out to be Two Face, and I mean, he kind of oh, that's right. Now, now Harvey Dent was one of the uh, one of the henchmen, right? I, later on, I think he's like a wasn't he um, in one of the movies? What was he uh, like the lawyer or um, something like that? Uh, that's right. That's right. Two Face. Yeah. And he turns out he gets um, you know um, acid all over his face. And he turns half and half, but it's bad. Yeah, yeah. We'll see I remember how it that. turns out. Um, but I'm excited. And, you know, I like the topic today. It's a little bit different than the sports. Trying to get through this week. You know, it's Dallas week, and I'm ready for next Monday. You're ready for uh, next Monday. Exactly. Have the Redskins. Have a great day, and I'm gone. Appreciate the call, Triple Digit. Triple Digit call, 404-382-0338. That is the number to the show. Yeah, I think it would be kind of cool um, to do a Justice League movie. Uh, or the Super Friends. I think that's what they were actually ter- termed and deemed the Super Friends. And they, they resided at the Justice League. And the Justice League was like, I don't know, this big glass building. And they all, that's where they hung out. It's kind of like Batman's lair or whatever, the Batcave. And that's where all of the, the, the people involved with the Justice League, the heroes involved with the Justice League, uh, I guess that's where they, they stayed at. That's, that's, that was their lodging. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I got to go back and look at all the members of uh, said super friends and and uh, and remember all of those guys but I know obviously it was Batman Superman it was Wonder Woman um, then you had Aquaman and I'm trying to think who else was part of their group okay Robin was with them as well and that's pretty much it I'm looking at a picture right now on my computer and uh, the super friends was Aquaman Batman Robin Superman Wonder Woman and and then they had I can't remember these two kids' names. And that was the whole hokey part of Saturday morning for the Super Friends. Is uh maybe it was Zan and Jaina. Um and then you had the Wonder Twins at some point. Maybe the, that's the same people. I don't know. They wore the little purple suits. And they had the little monkey. The little monkey's name was Bleak or Gleek or something like that. <laughs> I'm really ga- I'm, I'm really taking y'all back. I'm really taking y'all back. And my line was was the little monkey thingy they had. Was his name Gleek or Bleak or something like that? So yeah, so yeah, that would be that would be kind of cool, I guess. But you'd have to add a couple more heroes to the damn mix. Yeah, Wonder Twins activate all of that crap. <laughs> yeah, so it seems like Marvel had more of an edge as far as uh, uh, the superheroes. You know, uh, the superhero women in Marvel they were very uh, statuesque. With uh, big ass breasts and uh, ass sticking out, so it it was much more edgier <laughs> in Marvel. You know, Wonder Woman in, in DC, she was kind of flat chested. That not that there's nothing wrong with being flat chested, but you know, in, in in Marvel, it looked like the superheroes just came from the strip club from Magic City. <laughs> Am I lying? Can you feel me? Huh? Don't go away, the Doug Stewart Show. Stewart Show is off and running, but just like every company, we need sponsors. Would you like to work with one of the livest, most dynamic, and recognized sports talk show personalities in America? By the way, that's me. Getting in on the ground floor? Well, call us at 770-847-0536 or email me at Doug at thedougstewartshow.com and let's do business. From the smallest company in Atlanta to the biggest brands nationally and worldwide, Shouty. People know me and the Stews brand in these streets. I'll let you vote. Once again, the number is 770-847-0536 or email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. Yes! This is your folk, Doug Stewart. Want to protect you and your family from life's unexpected mishaps? Then join 7. Join 7 is a prepaid legal company under the umbrella of the Protection Group. Join 7 is the only group benefit or motor club in the U.S. that offers auto reimbursement coverage, key replacement coverage, roadside assistance, gives you a current metafile, prescription savings, and a fully encompassed prepaid legal benefit that includes identity theft. They got your back. 
The average combined cost to purchase these benefits individually is over 850 bucks a year. Join today and take advantage of all seven for $17 a month. They've been around for over 20 years, so check them out by clicking on the banner link on my page, the DougStewartShow.com, or the app. Just go ahead and join seven. I'm always saying get with the times. Stop acting like you at your mama house, calling that girl you met at summer camp two states away, and your mama screaming out, I know you better not be talking long distance running up my bill with that little hussy girl. Well, get with the times with your long distance charges. Presenting Univon. Univon offers unlimited worldwide calling to 60 plus countries for $14.99 a month. No contract, no activation fee, and no cancellation fee. Users can call anytime using their mobile phone or home IP phone. So stop flushing money down the drain. Get more details by clicking Univon's link banner on the DougStewartShow.com or the link on the DougStewartShow.com app. Try out Univon and call your peoples like you not at your mama house. Yeah, this is the Doug Stewart Show. Thank you for joining your boy. Have you told 31 people about the live is the most interactive fun show in America? Huh? Have you? Have you? Come on now. You need to go ahead and tell 31 people and get some of this live sports talk <laughs> in the famous words of Black Jesus. Uh, so, yeah, tell people about the show. Tell 31. Uh, matter of fact, tell 32 people about the live is most fun interactive show in America. Uh, you still got time to give you or your boy a call at 404-382-0338. Uh, you can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show dot com. All right. So if you're a company out there and you'd like to partner with the Doug Stewart Show, we'd love to partner with you. Yes. Email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show dot com. And uh, we'll promote the heck out of your brand or your your product, your company. We uh, we would love to work with you. And also, I need to put it out there. Uh, my producer tree is, uh, you know, telling me, make sure you remind people, we are looking for a digital media specialist. And, and what that basically entails is someone that's good with the programming side of, uh, of computers and the Internet that can come in and update our website uh, as well as uh, – Uh, The apps, uh, add banners, take banners away, pull analytics, that type of thing. So that's what we're looking for as a digital media uh, analyst. And uh, it could be a great opportunity for someone as an intern that's in college right now uh, to put on their resume. So it's a great, great opportunity. So uh, check your boy out. If you're interested, email me at Doug at the DougStewartShow.com. So, man, we've been having a lot of fun today talking about these sports stories. Uh, I talked about Kobe Bryant and a garbage article written about him. Todd Gurley may be back on the field sooner than we think. The Falcons are actually playing at 9.30 in the morning uh, this Sunday morning. Uh, Georgia Tech uh, on the road to Pitt. Uh, Georgia is a bye week. They take on the Jacksonville or, or the Florida Gators in Jacksonville in a couple of weeks. November 1st, I think, is the date. That's the weekend of my homecoming. Oh, yeah, let me tell you right now. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Next week, Friday, not this Friday, not Three days from now, but next week, Friday, I'm not going to be here. But we are going to have a replay or playback show or something um, on that Friday. Uh, I think it's October 31st. Yeah, I believe so. Last day of the month of October. I'm not going to be here that day. So that's going to be my first official day off because I'm going to homecoming. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Tell the world I'm coming home. <laughs> yes. Yeah, South Carolina State's homecoming uh, November 1st. So I'm, uh, that Friday, we, if you've ever been to an HBCU homecoming, you know how we get down. I mean, the party's going to start Thursday night. Friday is going to be a day party. Friday night there's going to be a party, and it's all about reminiscing and seeing people you haven't seen in a long time, kind of like what we did at the Atlanta Classic this uh, a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, I'm going homecoming. So next week, Friday, uh, I will not be doing the show live. But check it out. It's probably going to be the best of the Doug Stewart show. Uh, Maybe we'll replay some interviews. Uh, My producer, Tree, will figure all of that stuff out. She's great. I mean, she's absolutely fantastic. So next week, Friday, uh, listen to the show. The show will come on at 11 a.m. just like it does every day, Monday through Friday. Um, But it's not going to be live. It's going to be uh, tape something very, very good. Maybe we'll play a couple of stews, uh, classic stew 
clips and bits from the past. Maybe we'll do that. All right. This is the Doug Stewart Show. And, man, we've been tripping all day long about this, uh, these superheroes. I mentioned how I watched the TV show Gotham, and I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty damn good. Just like Smallville. You remember Smallville from a couple of years ago? This is more dark. This is darker than, uh, than Smallville. And it's kind of like uh, we were making the comparisons before we went to the break about DC Comics and Marvel Comics. And, uh, you know, the Justice League or, or uh, the Super Friends compared to Marvel characters. And I had to pull up the roster <laughs> for the Justice League. For the Super Friends, and their roster is lame as hell. Okay, they got Aquaman, Batman, Robin, Superman, and Wonder Woman, and that's it. And throughout the years, they came up with some little side things that were cute for kids, like Zan and Jaina, the Wonder Twins, and uh, these two little white kids. I don't even know their names right now. Maybe that's what their names were, Zan and Jaina. And then they had a little monkey at one time, and I looked, they had a, a dog, Wonder Dog. I think the dog was called Wonder Dog. The dog looks like a boxer, and he had a cape on. That's dumb as hell. <laughs> like, I don't think the dog flew or nothing like that. Why the hell you got on a cape? So, uh, the, the Super Friends were lame as hell in comparison to the Avengers or to Marvel Comics. I mean, the Avengers, you got you got straight ballers in the Avengers. I mean, uh, you got Captain America. You got the Hulk. The Hulk was actually a part of the Avengers. And see, this is the interesting thing about that whole talk is some of these characters that have their own movies, they could be part of the Avengers because they were. There's probably like 150 different superheroes in the Avengers. People may not remember, but the Hulk used to get down with the Avengers. And also Spider-Man used to be down with the Avengers. You remember that? Yes. And so I read a story a while back, and it was saying because one company owns the rights to the Spider-Man series, and another company owns the right to the Avengers and DC and Marvel and some kind of gobbledygook. That Spider-Man, even though it would be live as hell to bring the Spider-Man character and the and the char- and the guy that plays Spider-Man to the to the Avenger series, they can't do it. And it's something about money and about copyrights and this, that, and the other. But yeah, Spider-Man was a major, you know, a uh, member of the Avengers. He was. So, I mean, you got Captain America. I mean, like, to compare DC to Marvel and to compare the Justice League and the Super Friends to the Avengers is like comparing some lame-ass talk radio show on AM radio (laughs) to the Doug Stewart show. You just can't make the comparison. Okay, it's just two totally different things. One is real lame and the other is real live. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and talks cash-ish day and night. Was born to talk cash-ish. Yes, yes. So that's 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 the differences between those two, man. Is, you know, I think it might be kind of cute to see. Uh, and I guess really the cute thing about it would just just to be uh, be able to see uh, Wonder Woman and Aquaman again. You know, I don't even know if I they even need to do a Super Friends movie because they roster is lame as hell. And ultimately. Superman should be able to whoop everybody in the world's ass because he is a super uh, man, a quote unquote Superman, <laughs> you know. But uh, and 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 that and that's another little thing. Somebody called earlier and said, or oh, triple digit. I had triple digit on the phone, and he was saying that they're going to do this Batman versus uh, who was a Batman versus Superman movie. I mean, put all your, I got $5,000 on Superman. <laughs> I do. I got five grand on Superman. Batman don't even got no damn powers. He got a stinking ass utility belt. <laughs> if I was Superman, I'd rip Batman's utility belt off and slap the hell out of him with it. Whap. <laughs> Take your poke ass utility belt out of here, man. Ah. So I don't know how that movie's going to work. I don't know how that movie's going to work, man. What are you going to do? Uh, gadget me to death? <laughs> what are you going to do, Batman? Uh, Superman talking. Batman! I mean, seriously, dude. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Utility belt me to death? <laughs> That's 
that's ridiculous. So I want to see how that's going to work. I want to see how that's going to work. That's going to be very, very interesting when that movie comes out. Batman versus Superman. That's not even a contest. You know, that's like Notre Dame versus uh, North Cobb High School. You know, or, 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 the, or the Atlanta Falcons versus Southwest DeKalb. That's not even a competition. That's actually dumb. So I want to see how they're going to pull that off. I guess you're bringing together two big brands. And so people are going to be intrigued and want to come out and see it. I don't know how that's going to work. If you know anything about comic books, that's a clear ass cut. Like, put all your money on Superman. <laughs> put all your money on Superman. Empty the bank and put it on Superman. Yes. What Batman going to do? Shoot up a, 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 a rope with a hook on it and climb up a wall? And get away from Superman? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, no. Superman can fly. By the time Batman gets to the top of the wall, you remember when Batman and uh, Robin used to climb the walls uh, on the TV show and they'd get halfway up and some famous celebrity would stick their head out the window and have a conversation? Hey, come on, man. I mean, come on. When you really think about it, Batman is lame as hell. <laughs> now, they made him kind of cool over the last couple of years. It's, it's much darker than... Uh, then the old school uh, Batman with Adam West and those guys. Uh, it's much darker. I get it. But to be honest with you, to be technical, it's almost like revealing the fact that, that there's no Tooth Fairy <laughs> or there's no uh, Easter Bunny or, 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 or I hope no kids are listening right now. There's no Santa Claus. Uh, Batman is lame as hell. <laughs> Hate to break it to you. All right, man. Thank you for everybody that helped make today's show possible, man. Tree Taylor, a.k.a. The Tree of Life. Thank you for everything you do, Tree. I really appreciate it. Shouts out to Waterhand Walter. Thank you for what you do. CJ the DJ, the VJ. Thank you for doing what you do. I really do appreciate it, man. And uh, who else we got? Oh, yeah. Shouts out to Dwayne Bassan as well as uh, Gerald Oliveri. Uh, my tech engineering guys, I appreciate all that you do, man. Continue to tell people, tell 33 people. Just think Tony Dorsett. Tell 33 people about the live. It's the most fun, the most interactive sports talk show on radio. The Doug Stewart Show, all right? We'll holler tomorrow, same Doug time, same Doug channel. Peace.